Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie, and I appreciate y'all stopping by today to spend a small part of your day with me. Today I'll be showing y'all how I made these adorable coastal themed minis for my tiered tray. I hope y'all enjoy the video, and if you do, please give it a thumbs up, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and get started with the first DIY. For this project, I started with one of these mini wood palettes from Dollar Tree and stained the entire piece with one coat of Rust-Oleum stain in the color Kona. Once the stain was completely dry, I used apple barrel paint in the color Key West and painted over the top piece of the palette. While the paint was still wet, I took a paint scraper and immediately scraped the excess paint off the wood. I wiped the scraper after every pass to remove the excess paint and I continued to scrape over the paint until I was happy with the distressed look of the wood. For the three smaller sections, I used apple barrel paint in white and repeated the same steps by applying a coat and then immediately scraping it back off until I was happy with the way it looked. I wanted to keep the bottom piece of the palette mostly dark, so I dry brushed a couple of areas with the white paint then immediately scraped it back off with the scraper until it was really light. Then I decided to add a bit of the white paint to the top piece of the palette, so I went ahead and brushed it on and then immediately scraped it back off until I was happy with the way it looked. Next, I used one of the wooden seahorse ornaments from Dollar Tree, and since I wasn't going to hang the seahorse, I used some wood filler to fill in the hole at the top and set it aside to fully dry. If you don't have wood filler, you can also use the lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree to fill the hole. Once the wood filler was dry, I took a sanding block from Dollar Tree and sanded it down until it was flush with the rest of the wood. I used apple barrel paint in the color Beachcomber Beige to paint the seahorse. When the paint was completely dry, I used hot glue to attach the seahorse to the left side of the palette. Then to finish off this project, I took the Sea, Sand, and Sunshine sticker from the sticker set that I picked up at Dollar Tree and removed the raised piece and hot glued it to the right of the seahorse. That's it for this one. I think it turned out really cute. For the next project, I used 11 of these tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. I used the Kona stain and stained all 11 of the blocks. Once the stain was dry, I used the color Key West to paint three of the blocks using the same distressing technique as the first DIY. Next, I used the color Beachcomber Beige and painted four more of the blocks using the same technique. Then I used white paint to paint the last four blocks using the same technique. After the blocks were painted and completely dry, I used hot glue to attach the blocks together in sets. I made a set of three blue blocks, four brown blocks, and three white blocks. You could use wood glue or a stronger adhesive here if you wanted to, but I used hot glue and it held up just fine. Next, using my Cricut, I cut out the words sea, surf, and sand and applied them to the block sets. I found it easiest to cut the words apart and apply each letter separately. I really wish I would have used a different color of vinyl for the word C because the letters blend in a little too well with the color of the blocks. If you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, you can still do this project by using stickers, stencils, carbon paper, or even freehanding the letters onto the blocks. I've shown many ways in previous videos on how to transfer letters and words to your projects without using vinyl. If you would like, you can go back and check out some of those older videos. Here's how the blocks look with the words. It's kind of hard to see the words here, but I think it's just the bright lighting reflecting off the vinyl because they are much easier to read in person. To decorate these blocks, I used some twine from Dollar Tree and wrapped it around the top of each block set three times and tied it off on the front using a double knot. I wanted each block to look unique, so I changed the position of where I tied the knot so that one set had the knot on the left one on the right, and the last one in the middle. Then to finish off this project, I took some of these shells from Dollar Tree and hot glued one to each of the blocks right over where I tied the twine in a knot. And here's how cute this set of blocks turned out. For the third project, I used a large dowel rod and cut it into three pieces. One four inch, one three inch, and one two inch piece. I used hot glue to attach the pieces of the dowel rod together so that it resembled a piling pier. I used hot glue for this project and it's held up great, but you could use wood glue or another stronger adhesive if you would like. 
Once I had the dowels glued together, I took some twine from Dollar Tree and wrapped it around the top of the tallest dowel about five times using hot glue to secure it in place. Then I used some more of the twine and wrapped it around all three dowels about five times starting midway down on the shortest dowel. To finish off this project, I used one of these parrots that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I first removed the floral wire from the bottom of the parrot and then I used some hot glue to glue it to the medium sized dowel rod and to the tallest dowel rod. And that's it for this one y'all. It was so quick and easy but turned out super adorable. This one might be my favorite out of all of today's projects. For this next project, I used some of these willow branches from Dollar Tree. I started by cutting off a couple of the stems and then painted them with a couple thick coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color white and set them aside and let them fully dry. Next, I took two tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and painted them in the color Beachcomber Beige. Once everything was dry, I cut down the stems of three of the willow branches that are now going to represent the coral pieces and hot glued the pieces to one side of one of the tumbling tower blocks. I put two of the longer pieces on each side and then one of the shorter pieces in the middle. After I had the pieces in place, I used a generous amount of hot glue to attach the other block on top of the pieces of coral. This will allow the coral arrangement to stand up. Next, I took one of the 32 ounce mason jars from Hobby Lobby and put a very generous amount of hot glue in the middle of the bottom. Then I placed the coral arrangement down inside the jar, getting it as close to centered as possible. I used hot glue here, but if you wanted a stronger and longer lasting hold, you could definitely use a stronger adhesive such as E6000. Once I had the arrangement glued into place, I cut off all the pieces that were sticking above the top of the jar so that I would be able to screw the lid back on. I used some stone granules that I picked up at Walmart and filled up the bottom of the jar just enough to completely cover up the tumbling tower blocks. Next, I used some thick jute cord that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and wrapped the entire ring of the lid using hot glue as needed to hold it in place. Since hot glue and metal don't really mesh all that well, once I had it wrapped once around the lid, I started gluing the jute directly to itself as I went the rest of the way. If you wanted to, you could use hot glue in addition to E6000, but I found gluing the jute directly to itself works just as well. Once I had the outside ring completely wrapped, I hot glued the center part of the lid back in place and continued to wrap it until it was completely covered. To finish up this project, I used one package of the silver wire LED lights from Dollar Tree and placed them down inside the jar. I wasn't too particular about how the lights were placed, I just wanted to make sure there were lights on all sides of the coral arrangement. When I had all the lights in place, I replaced the lid and that was it for this one. I think this arrangement turned out absolutely gorgeous and it looks amazing as the focal point on the top tier of my tiered tray. For the fifth DIY, I used two of these flat wooden pallets from Dollar Tree and stained the front and back of them with the same cone of stain that I've used for all of today's projects. Once the stain was dry, I took the Apple Barrel Key West paint and used the same distressing method I used in the first DIY on the top slat of both pallets. For the second slat on the pallets, I used white paint and again used the same method to paint them. I used beachcomber beige to paint the third slat on both pallets using the same distressing method. Then for the last slat on both pallets, I took some more of the white paint and very lightly dry brushed a couple of areas on each slat. I do want to go ahead and mention that I did distress the sides of each of the slats with the color I used so that they were all cohesive. For the first palette, I used one of the starfish from Dollar Tree and some vinyl I cut out on the Cricut. I used a generous amount of hot glue on all the points of the starfish that were going to be in direct contact with the wood and placed it on the left side of the palette. Once the starfish was in place, I put the vinyl that said, smell the sea, feel the breeze, hear the waves, be at ease on the right side of the palette. I just went into Cricut Design Space and chose a font that I felt was kind of coastal looking and typed out the phrase so that it would fit on the palette slats. 
Again, I mentioned earlier in this video, if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine, there are numerous ways you can get the words onto the palette and still be able to do these projects. To help this sign stand due to the weight of the starfish, I took a tumbling tower block that I had stained and hot glued it to the back of the palette just under the top of the bottom slat. For the second palette, I used one of these sand dollars from Dollar Tree and another phrase that I had cut out on the Cricut. I applied a generous amount of hot glue to the back of the sand dollar and glued it to the left side of the palette. However, now looking back, I wish I would have put the sand dollar on the right side of the palette so that the two palettes would have mirrored each other. Next, I put the vinyl on the palette to the right of the starfish. I used this light, cool tone blue vinyl, not realizing it was going to blend in so well with the blue paint that I chose to use for these projects. So I would definitely recommend a darker blue or another color vinyl altogether for this sign. It is much easier to read in person and when on the tiered tray because the light isn't directly reflecting off the vinyl. Then to finish off this sign, I took another stained block and hot glued it just under the top of the last slat on the palette so that it would stand up. And that's it for these quick and simple signs. I love how these turned out and they look great on my tiered tray. For this next project, I used one of the small wooden gift boxes from Dollar Tree. I started by staining the entire box inside and out with the Rust-Oleum Kona stain. Once the stain was completely dry, I used Mod Podge and some of the stone granules to make it look like what is now a treasure chest had been buried in the sand. I applied a thick layer of Mod Podge around the bottom of the box, then put the granules on top and shook off any excess. I wanted the front of the box to have less sand on it and one side to have quite a bit more, so I put the Mod Podge in the exact areas I wanted to cover with the sand. I did make sure there was no Mod Podge or granules on the bottom of the box so that it would still sit flat. To decorate the inside of the treasure chest, I used one of the fishing nets from Dollar Tree and cut off a small section and placed it down inside the box. I then used some hot glue to tack it in place around the lid and on the sides. Once I was happy with the way it looked, I cut off any of the excess pieces. Next, I took a variety of seashells from Dollar Tree and hot glued one of each of the four tops on each corner of the box. And then I put a few of each down inside just to help fill it up. I did not hot glue any of the shells down inside the box, only the ones on the four corners. I then took a few of the smaller pieces of sea glass from Dollar Tree and placed them down inside the box. Next, I took a couple of the larger faux pearl beads from Dollar Tree and placed them inside the box. I also went ahead and put about four of the medium-sized pearls from Dollar Tree in the box as well. Then, to finish off this treasure chest, I took a small piece of scrap paper and rolled it up like a treasure map and used hot glue to seal it. I then used some twine from Dollar Tree to tie a knot so that it looked like the twine is what was holding the map shut. To finish the treasure map, I very lightly brushed on some Kona stain to age the paper and make it look well used. Finally, I used a bit of hot glue to attach the treasure map to one of the pieces of sea glass so that it would be front and center. I really do love how this little treasure chest turned out. For the seventh project, I used one of these relaxed wood words from Dollar Tree. I started by giving the base one coat of Apple Barrel's Beachcomber Beige. Next, I used apple barrel paint in the color white to paint the letter R. I used Delta Creative paint in the color Paradise to paint the letter E. To paint the letter L, I used apple barrel paint in the color Key West. I used folk art paint in the color Calypso Sky to paint the A. And finally, to paint the letter X, I used folk art paint in the color Aqua. I felt like this piece needed a little something extra, so I used more Mod Podge and some more of the stone granules to cover the base and give it a more of a day at the beach look. To finish off this quick little project, I used three more of the little shells and one of the medium sized pearl beads from Dollar Tree. I hot glued one of the round shells in front of the letter R and hot glued the pearl inside one of the clam shells, then glued it in front of the letter X. I then took the other clamshell 
and hot glued it on top of the other shell so that it looked like the clam was open to expose the pearl. And that's it for this sign. I love how quick and easy it was to make and I think it turned out beautiful. For the next quick and easy project, I used one of the little sandcastles from Dollar Tree's Beach Fairy Garden Collection. I used apple barrel paint in the color Burnt Umber to paint the little doors of the sandcastle. Then to paint the little bucket, I used folk art paint in the color Aqua. Next, to add more texture to the sandcastle, I used Mod Podge and applied a generous layer around the entire base of the castle and on top of the bucket. Then I put some of the stone granules on top, shaking off the excess. Once I had the sand around the bottom of the castle, I decided to paint the castle with one coat of Apple Barrel's Beachcomber Beige. After the castle was dry, I took more Mod Podge and applied it to the indentations and the ledges on top of the castle and sprinkled more of the granules on top to add a little more dimension. Next, I covered the little peaks on the very top with more Mod Podge and granules. You can see on the front, sides, and back of the castle where it has a bit of texture in places to represent sand. So to finish off this project, I went ahead and applied the Mod Podge and granules to these spots all around the castle to add just a little more dimension and to make it look a little more realistic. I am so in love with how this little sand castle turned out. I think it is an absolute perfect fit for my tiered tray. For the ninth project, I used a small wood oval that I had in my stash, one of the six inch wooden dials from Dollar Tree, and two jumbo craft sticks. I started by finding the center of the wood oval and drilled a hole just big enough for the dowel rod to fit snugly in. I did not drill all the way through the wood, just enough for the dowel to stand up. I then painted the oval with Apple Barrel Beachcomber Beige and stained the dowel rod with the Kona stain. Next, I made the arrows for the sign using jumbo popsicle sticks. I started by cutting one end of the stick straight, then I measured the stick to about three inches long and then marked up about a half an inch from the three inch mark so that I would know where the tip of the arrow should be. Once I had the marks, I took one of the angled rulers from Dollar Tree and used it to trace out the tip of the arrow. Then I used a pair of scissors to cut the stick to shape. I ended up being able to get two arrows per popsicle stick, so I only needed to use two popsicle sticks to create the four needed arrows. After I had all the arrows cut out, I stained the fronts and backs with the Kona stain. When the stain was dry, I took the white paint and distressed the arrows using the same distressing method that I've used in the previous projects on this video. I laid out the arrows where the way they were pointed alternated and then using my Cricut cut out the words sunshine, beach life, good vibes, and tan lines in different color vinyl and fonts and applied them to the arrows. Again, here you could use stickers freehand or trace the words onto the arrows if you don't have a vinyl machine. Also, I know some of the words are kind of hard to read, but that's once again due to the direct light and they are much easier to read in person and when they're sitting on the tiered tray. Next, I put a generous amount of hot glue inside the hole on the oval and placed the dowel rod inside and allowed the glue to set up. I wanted the sign to look like it was sitting on a beach, so I once again took the Mod Podge and granules and applied it all over the top of the oval and around the sides so that it was completely covered. I used hot glue to glue the arrows onto the dowel rod, but if you wanted to use wood glue or a stronger adhesive here, you definitely could. I used Gorilla hot glue sticks, and I've never had an issue with smaller projects like this falling apart once the glue fully sets up. I did try to place the arrows evenly apart, but I just eyeballed it, and since this is a fun themed tiered tray, I wasn't too picky about them being perfectly spaced or completely straight. Then, to finish off this project, I used two more shells and a medium sized pearl and glued the two shells in front of the dowel rod and the pearl right in the middle in front of the shells. I'm absolutely thrilled with how cute this directional sign turned out. For the next easy DIY, I used one of these nautical wood bead garlands from Dollar Tree. I started by cutting the garland apart and separated all the beads into five sets of five and the anchors by themselves. 
I used the Kona stain to stain the anchors, and then I painted five beads with white paint, five beads with paradise paint, five beads with Key West paint, five beads with the Calypso paint, and five beads with the Aqua paint. Here's what all the beads and anchors look like once they're painted and stained. To make the tassels for each end of the garland, I used regular brown twine and some blue and white cotton twine from Dollar Tree. I took both twines and wrapped them around my fingers approximately 25 times and cut the twine from the spools. Then using a piece of the brown twine, I tied a double knot at the top of the loops to hold all the pieces together. Next, I cut the bottom section of the loop to separate all the pieces of the twine. I then took the blue and white and the brown twine at the same time and wrapped it around the top of the tassel several times, probably five to six times, and tied it off with a double knot. To finish off the tassel, I trimmed it up so that all the pieces were even and so that it was the same length as the other tassel. I used the regular brown twine from Dollar Tree as the line for the beaded garland, and to make it easier to string the beads and anchors onto the twine, I took a piece of painter's tape and placed it around the end of the twine, and I also used a large upholstery needle, but that's not necessary. I placed the beads on the twine in the order from the lightest color to the darkest color, with one of the anchors in between the sets of five beads. I will say I wish I would have used a different quality twine because it was difficult to slide the anchors due to the twine coming unraveled and bunching up. To finish up the garland, I attached one of the tassels to each end. This is where the upholstery needle did come in handy to thread the twine through the top of each tassel. Once I had the twine through the tassel, I pulled it close to the first bead and tied a double knot to secure it to the garland and cut off the excess twine. I repeated the same steps to attach the other tassel to the other end of the garland, again securing it with a double knot. I absolutely love how this garland turned out, and it definitely looks like it cost more than just a dollar and some change. For the last project, I used a small wood circle I had in my stash and one of the 6 inch wooden dowels from Dollar Tree. I started by cutting the dowel to 3 inches long. I painted the wood circle with beachcomber beige and stained the dowel rod with the Kona stain. I did drill a hole in the center of the circle like I did in DIY number nine. I put a generous amount of hot glue inside the hole and placed the dowel inside and allowed the glue to set up. Again, I used Mod Podge and the stone granules to cover the top and sides of the circle to make it look as if it has been sitting out on a beach covered in sand. Next, I used a leftover party hat from Dollar Tree and opened it up so that it would lay flat. Then I took a roll of ribbon and traced it onto the party hat so I would have a nice even circle and then I cut it out. Once I had the circle cut out, I folded it in half to find the center and cut a little slit in the middle so that it would fit down over the top of the dowel. Next, I used one of the Dollar Tree hula skirts that I had taken apart for a previous project and took a few pieces, folded them in half, and hot glued them around the circle until the top was completely covered. I would definitely recommend finger protectors while doing this because the hot glue will sneak up through the pieces of the hula skirt and burn you, so if you do this project, please be careful. Once the circle was completely covered, I trimmed down the pieces of the hula skirt so that it would look more like a tropical beach umbrella. After the top was trimmed up, I placed it down on the dowel rod, flipped it over, and used a generous amount of hot glue to hold it in place. Next, I took a small wood bead that I picked up in a huge pack from Amazon and stained it with the Kona stain. When it was dry, I used hot glue to attach it to the top of the dowel rod. Then to finish off this umbrella, I worked with the top to get it to look more like an umbrella and trimmed it up until I was satisfied with the way it looked. I'm really happy with the way this turned out and I think it is super cute. Here's a look at all of today's projects displayed on my tiered tray. I absolutely love how all these DIYs came together to create a colorful, calming, coastal inspired tiered tray. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Mine has got to be the piling piers with the parrot. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by. And if you enjoyed this video, 
please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a while. I have a bunch of fun projects on the way. I want to apologize for sounding so tired today, but this is my second time editing and doing the voiceover for this video due to technical difficulties, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning, so I'm going to hop off here real quick and get some much-needed sleep. I'll see y'all next time.